Hey, mathematicians, this is Mrs. Shopper coming to you again with section seven and eight. We're, we're cutting back on the amount of proofs that we're doing this year. We've kind of talked about that already. And at the same time, I think it's important to understand some of the different vocabulary and terms. And so Ms. Edstrom and I are focusing on getting you to understand what they mean and apply them and not necessarily applying them in a proof. So you're still understanding those concepts and those ideas. We're just not necessarily putting it together in a proof. So this video is going to be very vocabulary heavy. Um, you'll probably need to pause and write down your information. Um, when I look at your notes, I should see a fair amount in your notes in terms of that. And again, it comes back to you. If you want to ask a family member to help you study, it's easier for them if you give them your notes and they can quiz you through your notes. It's important to reach out for help. You do not need to do this alone. Get into study groups, virtual study groups, um, rely on your families, rely on me, but let's make sure we're really understanding these topics. So what we're gonna be able to do is you can identify or define supplementary and complementary angles, understand the relationship between angles, and understand the relationship between segments. And again, applying that and how do we utilize it. So the first one we're going to talk about is the angle addition postulate. So when I look at this particular angle, letter D, point D, is on the interior of BA or ABC. All right. And we talked about the interior earlier in the year in unit one, chapter one. If point D lies on the interior of ABC, we can then say, the measurement of ABD plus the measurement of DAC equals the measurement of ABC. So each of the parts of that angle equal the sum of that angle. So how does that work? All right, so in this case, we're using a relatively simple uh, measurement. If find the measurement of angle one, if we know the measurement of angle two is 58 degrees, and we know that this entire measurement is 162. So we know that the measurement of angle one plus 58 degrees equals 162. We can then say that the measurement of angle one is equal to 104, 104 degrees. Now, um, what I would expect you to be able to do is if I gave you this as, say, x plus 7, and this was 2x minus 8, and then this was 5x plus 7, right? Can you set up the equation to solve that? x plus 7 plus 2x minus 8 equals 5x plus 7 you should be able to solve that equation, figure out what x is, and then substitute it in for x plus seven. Okay. So being very aware of how that those pieces work out. All right, being able to apply it, but the whole idea of the angle addition postulate says that. By the way, um, postulates we assume to be true, Theorems are proven true. That's the difference when you hear postulate versus a theorem. And we're going to be mentioning both today in the lesson. Postulate means we assume it to be true. Okay. Theorem means I could put together a proof to make that happen. And so that's the difference between a postulate and a theorem. So here are a couple of theorems. Um, we have the supplement theorem. And it's building on some vocabulary we had in unit one. If two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary angles, which would mean they equal 180 degrees. So form a linear pair, that's a vocab from chapter one. Um, and again, we're going to keep using that vocabulary throughout the year. It's not like, oh, chapter one's done, don't need to worry about it. You do, because we're going to keep pulling that back. So be aware of that too. The complements theorem says if the non-common sides, so these two are the non-common sides of two adjacent angles, again, adjacent angles is from chapter one, two angles that share a common side. If the two non-common sides form a right angle, then those angles are complementary. Okay? 
supplement theorem, complement theorem. Pause the video to write down those definitions, study them, practice them. I do expect you to know those as we're conversing in class. That is something you need to come prepared with when you come to class. All right, properties of angle congruence. Look at these keywords we're seeing again, right? We're seeing, whoops, I'm not sure why that's doing that. I messed it up. Unpin it. We've got transitive. We've got symmetric. I promise you they'll be coming. Oh, let's just move that over there. And then we have reflexive. Same thing we saw when we were talking in the previous lesson with algebraic proofs. And they mean the same thing. That understanding what reflexive, symmetric, and transitive means, those words are going to come up throughout the year. And so if you can keep in mind that reflexive means, you know, it means it's like a mirror, right? It's the same thing. Symmetric means you can change the order. If we can say that angle one is congruent to angle two, then we can say angle two is congruent to angle one. We used that in the last um, proof that we did with algebraic proofs. And then transitive property. And this kind of looks like the law of syllogism when you're talking about um, deductive reasoning too, right? If A then B, if B then C, then A then C. We used if P then Q, if Q then R, then P then R. So those are also pieces with that. Okay, so properties of angle congruence. Again, pause the video and get that written down in your notes. All right, we have the congruent supplements theorem and the congruent complements theorem. Told you today would be vocab heavy. Just a lot of new stuff. So make sure you're really practicing it when you're going through it. So the congruent supplements theorem says, the congruent supplements theorem, let's use the words, congruent supplements theorem. So if you have two angles that are supplementary to the same third one. So if we say one and two are supplementary and three and two are supplementary, the congruent supplements theorem allows us to say, then one is congruent to angle three. If we know that angles one and two are supplementary and angles three and two are supplementary, we can then say because of the congruent supplements theorem that angles one and three are congruent. Okay, that's the congruent supplements. The congruent complements works the same way. If we can say that angles four and five are complementary, and we can say that six and five are complementary, then we can say that four and six are going to be congruent. If you have two angles complementary to the same third, these two angles are gonna be congruent. And that's called the congruence complements theorem. Okay, take some time, write it down, vocab heavy, I know, I know. All right, vertical angles theorem. So we talked about vertical angles in chapter one. We identified that those are angles that are opposite each other, right, formed by intersecting rays or intersecting segments, depending on how it works. So if we have two angles that are vertical, the vertical angles theorem allows us to state that they're congruent. So whatever angle one's measure is, angle three is gonna have the same measure because they are vertical angles. Vertical angles are congruent. Same thing with two and four. If angle two and angle four are vertical angles, they have the same measurement. They are congruent, okay? Take time to write this down. Right angles theorems. All right, we're almost there, kiddos. I know, I know, I know, I know it's a lot of vocab but it's a lot of information that we need to get out to you. There are five different right angles theorems. These are all things that we can take if we know that we have right angles. <coughs> so this one says, if the lines are perpendicular, we have four right angles. If we have all four right angles, we can say that all of them are congruent. 
all right angles are measure of 90 degrees, they're all congruent. We can say that perpendicular lines form congruent adjacent angles. Their angles are congruent and they're adjacent. Adjacent is a vocab word from chapter one. Adjacent means they share a common side. If two angles are congruent and supplementary, if two angles are congruent and supplementary, same length and equal 180 degrees, then each angle is a right angle. And if two congruent angles form a linear pair, if two congruent angles form a linear pair, they are also right angles. Think about the supplements theorem that we talked about. Two angles that form a linear pair are 180 degrees. And then they're supplementary. Now, if those two angles that form a linear pair are congruent, then they have to be 90 degrees, which makes them a right angle. Take time to write each of these down. And one other piece that I want to add to your notes. This is it. Last slide. We're almost there. You've almost got this, right? Is the segment addition postulate. And it builds off of the angle addition postulate um, that says if A and B and C are collinear, Collinear is a vocab from chapter one. It means on the same line. Co means together, linear, same line. And if B is between A and C, so it doesn't matter where B falls on this, that the measurement of AB plus the measurement of BC equals the measurement of AC. Okay. So, and then with segments, we also have the transitive the symmetric and the reflexive properties, keeping those vocabs in, those vocab words consistent, okay? I need you to study, I need you to know these words. We're gonna throw them out, we need you to know what they mean. If we say something like use the supplement theorem to solve this problem, you need to understand what the supplement theorem is in order to pro solve that problem, right? You've got to know those details. I always talk about how my son could probably play football a lot better than me, but I know enough to watch the game where I could be like, yeah, I get it. But if it came down to executing it, he could do better because he knows more of the details. He knows more of the rules of the game. If you want to do well, which I believe you all do, part of that is really understanding those details and really understanding what these mean and be able to give them to me because those are the details that you need to know so you can apply them when you're asked to solve problems. All right, we are gonna rock this class. We're gonna keep going, but we have to learn how to prepare. And that's, we're gonna continue to remind you. We're gonna continue to give you tricks. We're gonna continue to talk about different ways that you can do that because I really believe we're learning a different way um, than we've done in the past. And I think we have to practice that process. So, um, Thank you for listening. Thank you for getting all this vocab done. I'm looking forward to seeing all of you in our Google Meet when we do our review for our unit two assessment. So take care and we'll see you soon.